Continuing on with the investigation of the Air India Flight 171 incident that took place on June 12, 2025, India's Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau has released its preliminary report on this accident. And it has some really shocking results in there that took all of us by surprise. And I got to tell you, this story has more plot twists. So look at this. This is when they were taking some of the wreckage away to go put it into storage for their investigation. It lo and it looks like they hit a snag, literally. So I don't know what extra damage was done to that section there, but it definitely looks like it hit that sign there. So on Air India Flight 171's preliminary report, we're looking here at the their section here on the accident flight. So this is in section 12, but I'm gonna take you down here to page 14, where it starts talking about what happened. So here's where the aircraft started to roll at 8.07.37. Now this is UTC time. Local time for them, you add five hours and 30 minutes. So it was actually 1.37 p.m. when they took off. So now here's all of the critical parts of the, the flight here. So it did pass the V1 speed and it achieved 153 knots, which is the requirement. And then two seconds later, it hit the VR speed. So that's the speed that you're at rotate. That means you're committed. The nose is going up no matter what. And so that was achieved right here to see two seconds later. And then four seconds later right here is it had lift off at 8.08, 39 seconds. So just remember this timestamp here, 8.08, 39. Here it achieved its maximum recorded airspeed of 180 knots at about three seconds after takeoff. So it was at about 8.08, 42. You see that? Three seconds later. Immediately thereafter, engine one and engine two fuel cutoff switches transitioned from run to cutoff position, one after another within a time gap of one second. And I'm like, holy cow. That means one of the pilots, and there's two of these little buttons. I'll show you them in a second. They go like this and click and go like this and click. So it takes two intentional movements to make that happen. So here's what it looks like. It's on the center console between the two pilots. And let me just point out to you that it's pretty hard to accidentally do something to these. And I'll tell you why. Because you have these guards. There's one here on the left and there's one here on the right. So it's not like you could accidentally like slip your hand over when you're reaching for the the thrusters or something or instead of pulling the flaps there's there's just no way you could accidentally bump those secondly these have to be pulled out and there's a detent which i'll show you here in the next picture so you can see how there's like that detent that you have to click over this so these have to be very intentional when you pull these you don't just brush up against them it has to pull out and then flip up over the detent so in this case here they're in cutoff mode and if you wanted to put them in run mode you have to pull them up and out and then and then rotate it upward over the detent so it makes it very hard for any inadvertent control over this switch and here it is from another angle too from the left hand side so you can see that all of the protection they put around these things to prevent any type of inadvertent switching okay so the preliminary report goes on to say then that the engine N1 and N2 began to decrease from their takeoff values as the fuel supply to the engines was cut off. And this is where it gets really kind of spooky. It says it right here in the cockpit voice recording. One of the pilots is heard asking the other, why did he cut off? The other pilot responded that he did not do so. I'm not so sure I believe that. Because in order to cut those switches off, it has to be an intentional movement that you have to go like this and like this. So for one pilot to say, why did you cut it off? And the other one says, I didn't. I'm not buying that story. So now I'm kind of thinking, and I feel bad about this. I hate to even bring this up. I got to ask. And I'm, no, I'm sure that some of you were wondering the same thing too. Could this have been intentional? Was one of the pilots on purpose trying to bring this plane down and you know this is not without precedence either but you know and i don't want to stomp on somebody's grave but that is certainly one of the thoughts because there's really only three reasons i can think of why these switches would be turned off one so let's say one of your engines flares out but what they do to restart it was they just click it off and click it right back on and then that's the end of it and, and they both know what they're doing. It's not like one of them flips the switch and the other one goes, oh, why did you flip the switch? Oh, I didn't do it. So what was happening in this cockpit isn't making sense at all to me, folks. Okay, so that was the intentional cause. The other one could be, what if it was completely unintentional, like total brain fart, let's, like, let's say, oh, I think I'm doing the landing gear and bringing the landing gear up. 
but instead I'm reaching over and I'm going twist, pull up, push down, click. Same thing with the other one. You got to do one after the other. And so that scenario, I don't think it's as possible really as the I'm doing it on purpose scenario. So let me know down in the comments what you think about that. And then this is where they saw the cutoff, the fuel cutoff. This is what your fuel control switch area looks like. And your, your two switches are right here. And this is on a good one. And this is what they found at the crash site. So there's your two switches. And they're both in the run position, which means that they're up. So you just like this one is so they have this image here to show you for reference what it looks like in the up position so they were both up so that does prove that they at least put the switches back into the run position that confirms what they saw on the flight data recorder so this was actually positive news for boeing because you remember the crash happened here at june 12th and then it hit a low in the week afterwards but it started to come back up and then right here when news started to leak out about it was the pilot error most likely the you can see Boeing stock hit a 52 week high. And then this was a new picture that they gave us. So this is one of the clearest pictures we've seen yet of the plane actually taking off. It says here that this CCTV footage showed the Ram Air turbine getting deployed during the initial climb immediately after liftoff. So you can sort of see it poking out of the bottom of the plane over there. But here they have a a closer zoom in shot of it so it's like here it is barely off of the runway and the ram air turbine has already deployed and there was no significant bird activity so a lot of people were saying well maybe there was birds strike or something maybe that you know killed the engine and we didn't see any engine flame out or anything and so the aircraft started to lose altitude before it crossing the airport perimeter wall after takeoff before air india flight 171 even reached the borderline fence of the airport it was already losing altitude so the cockpit data reporter here says that both engines and two values passed below the minimum idle speed and then the rat hydraulic pump began supplying hydraulic power at 808.47 yeah, so that was about eight seconds after liftoff that the ram air turbine was already deployed and supplying power to the plane so the cockpit data recording here then shows that the engine one fuel cutoff switch transitioned from the cutoff position back to run at about 808.52 so this is exactly 10 seconds after it was originally triggered and then the apu inlet door began opening at i guess it, yeah two seconds later 54 808 54 consistent with the apu auto start logic and then so thereafter here this was about four seconds later the engine two fuel cutoff switch was also transitioned from cutoff to run so when the fuel control switches are moved from cutoff to run while the aircraft is in flight each engine's full authority dual engine control that's that fadec i told you about on the previous video it automatically manages a relight and thrust recovery sequence of ignition and fuel introduction so you don't have to restart the engines or anything it does all of that for you however so the egt was observed to be rising for both engines indicating that that they were undergoing a relight right so engine one's core deceleration stopped and it reversed and it started to progress to recovery so it looks like engine one was on its way to coming back up to thrust again but look what happened with engine two engine two was able to relight but could not arrest the core speed deceleration in other words they couldn't stop it from slowing down reintroduced fuel repeatedly to the increased core speed acceleration and recovery so this was all probably done under the control of the computer so it couldn't stop the the deceleration and it repeatedly tried to increase the core speed and send fuel in there so apparently all of this was just not enough they just weren't high enough off the ground to be able to recover and then it stopped recording at 809.11 that's when it crashed now here's uh, the thing here if you look at 80905, so this is about six seconds before the crash, the pilots transmitted mayday, mayday, mayday. 
and apparently nothing else. And then the air traffic inquired about the call signal, and they did not get a response. But they observed the aircraft crashing outside the airport and activated the emergency response. Now, this is why I didn't mention in any of my previous videos here on the Air India Flight 171 incident about what was said by the pilots, the mayday, 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 because everybody else was reporting that they were saying, mayday, mayday, mayday. We have no compression or something like that. I've heard some people say we've, we're losing power. We don't have power, this, or that, and the other. And it doesn't look like from this preliminary report that anything other than Mayday, Mayday, Mayday was spoken. So I was very frustrated, as I'm sure many of you are, that here on the Air India incident, there's so much fake news floating around about this they were putting out fake pictures of the of the cockpit voice recorder they were putting out fake preliminary reports they were putting out fake other reports that said that there was something wrong with the captain's seat you've probably heard that i'm not going to believe it until i hear the actual voice recording that's what i want to hear Okay, so I made this chart here with all of the timestamps uh, to show you so we can take a quick glance, get an at-a-glance view here just to see how quickly everything unfolded. So here's when uh, the pushback from the gate started was at 743. But right down here, really, this is everything that just leads up to it. So we want to start right here where the takeoff roll begins. So that happens at 807.37. And then they reach that V1 speed at 808.33. So pay attention to the last two digits of these because this is really showing you how little time they, they had to react here. And then their VR speed is at 808.35 and liftoff is at 808.39. So three seconds after liftoff is when the rat was deployed. So obviously the system noticed that there was something wrong with the engines at that point, that they didn't have any power. And then at 8.42, that's, see, that's at the exact same time. This is exactly three seconds after liftoff. This is when the engine cutoff switches to the cutoff position. So three seconds after liftoff. And then it takes them, for whatever reason, it takes them 10 seconds before they try to switch the first one back to run for engine one. And so they get it going back. And then an additional four seconds before they switch the engine two back to the run position. That, to me... Is too much time between these two. That should have been boom, boom, boom. That should have been done in like one or two seconds. So by this time, they realize they, they don't have any control now. They know that they're sinking. And it's at 8.56. So it is now, it's about 17 seconds after liftoff. Uh, so here at 9.05, so this is now uh, about 25, 26 seconds after liftoff is when they issued the Mayday call, and then they crashed six seconds after that. So this from here to here, see, so look, here's your, your let's, let's look at the, from the liftoff time. So from liftoff time, you have 39, 808.39, all the way down to 809.11. So that means this entire flight lasted for 33 seconds, and that was it. So in that 33-second time window, that's it right in here, you see this? They only had 33 seconds of time in order to see everything that was going on here. It seemed like they valiantly tried to switch them back on during this 10 second time frame here, but it just wasn't enough time. And really, truth be told, their altitude wasn't really high enough anyway, in my opinion, for any type of recovery like that. They probably would have been better off if they had gone up to like a thousand or two thousand feet or three thousand feet, you know, before they noticed the problem like that. But again, I still have to wonder why in the world would they have cut these off here? Both of them, not just one, but two. Because usually when you have like an, an engine flare out or something, it's one engine. It's not both engines at once, right? So they would only do one switch. So this is a complete mystery to us. So maybe they will be able to tell from the cockpit voice recording what else were they saying to each other. And of course, they'll have to dig into the lives of both the pilots. What were they doing in the week leading up to the crash? And they're going to they're going to have to check. Was one of them psychotic? Was were they on drugs? You know what was going on, because none of this makes any sense at all. Now, as for the rest of the report here, they gave a lot of information about the airplane that we, of course, already knew about. And then, in talking specifically about the aircraft information, they mentioned here that the left-hand engine was installed on May 1st, 2025, and the right-hand engine was installed on 
March 26th, 2025. It says that there was four Category C minimum equipment list items active on the aircraft, and these were invoked on June 9th. And they were pretty much for simple stuff, you know, your flight deck door, visual surveillance, airport map function, FD printer. Now, the only other thing that sort of comes into play here that they may be evaluating in relation to these fuel cutoff switches is right here that the FAA issued a special airworthiness information bulletin right here back in 2018 regarding potential disengagement of the fuel control switch locking feature. And that doesn't make any sense because, you know, why wouldn't they have just been replaced if there was a problem? We don't know if there was a problem on this plane or if that problem could have led to the condition that the switches ended up in. So that's sort of unknown right now. Yeah, sometimes these preliminary reports end up opening up a whole Pandora's box of more questions. They give you more questions than the answers. Um, but remember though that this report was based on the 737 model airplanes though, not this particular one. So that's another thing that you have to take with a grain of salt. Now they also showed us some clearer pictures that we hadn't seen before either. So here's a, a little bit of a elevated view of the crash scene. So the plane was coming from the right and was coming this way to the left and it struck this building. And this is where the aft section of the plane broke apart here. And the landing gear is halfway into the middle of the building here. And the rest of the plane kept going and slamming into all of these other buildings here. These are probably three or four other buildings in a row. So here is a map of the entire impact field. Yeah, the plane hit this building and all of the rest of the debris came into all of these other buildings here. So here is an aerial view of that after the fact, after the crash. So here you can see there's where the tail was sticking out of that building there. So it looks like a lot of the plane just kind of scraped along the top of this building and the right engine got caught on the top of this building underneath there's like i guess it's a concrete structure around an air conditioner so it got embedded in there part of the right wing ended up over here past this building the vertical stabilizer in the rudder ended up here left hand wing ended up on over here at this building the center tank ended up here the left engine ended up over here part of the right wing was back over here and the left wing was down here the flight deck ended way up over here at the other end of building F in the image. That was about, a, a, I think they said it was something like over 700 feet of scattered debris field. And then this diagram here shows how the plane struck this building and it was at an eight degree incline. And remember the tail section ended up right here and its landing gear ended up inside the building. So there's a couple of after shots that they showed here. And then this is the view that I showed you of here's where the right engine had ended up embedded in that little concrete structure surrounding the air conditioning unit. And here's one of the wings here, the right wing, the outbound. Now here you can see the slats are deployed. So this should put to bed any theories that a lot of people had at the beginning that like I got millions of comments from people saying, oh, can't you see it, Jeff? Can't you see the flaps and the slats weren't deployed, blah, blah, blah. Well, they were, and here they are. They're, they're still fully extended right there. So here's where the left engine was found embedded at the bottom of one of the buildings. And then, of course, where they found the nose landing gear. And look at this. Up here on this building, you have the left mid-wing was actually embedded right into the upper part of that building there. And here you can see, this should prove also, too, about the flap. So here's the flap handle lever. And they said that it was fully engaged in the 5-degree setting, which is the appropriate setting for takeoff. So you can see it was still sitting there in that setting. And then this is the landing gear lever module right here. They found it. It was all burnt. This is what it normally looks like. So it looks like it was in a halfway up position when they found it. They, of course, provide meteorological information. And they gave some limited timestamps of some of the communications. And there is the condition of the flight data recorder. So these are the official pictures of the flight data recorders. These, of course, do not match anything that all of the other news agencies had put out earlier because many of them were using incorrect photos or stock photos or AI generated photos. Now, if you missed my previous video on the Texas flash floods, 
and what caused all of that and how that system broke down, make sure you check this out over here. And if you missed my previous video on the Champlain Towers update on the government's investigation into that and they're getting really close, check this video out over here. So thank you for joining us and we'll see all of you on the next one.